The Scientific Revolution. The Scientific Revolution began in Italy. It makes sense that it is going to begin in Italy for three reasons. First, Italians wake up every day looking at these wonderful ruins of Rome. Constant reminder of how great life used to be, and it makes sense that they would want to go back to that lifestyle. The second two reasons have to do with the Crusades. The Crusades taught the Western world about those Islamic achievements we learned about, especially in science and technology. Europeans were so impressed with those things that they wanted to bring them back to Europe, Europe with them, which then opens trade. Trade is going to naturally, just like in the Roman Empire, move from the east to Italy. Remember, the geography of Italy makes sense so that the trade would come by boat to Italy and then be dispersed throughout Europe. So Italians are the first people to see all the wonders of the wet rest of the world and the first to embed it into their regular everyday life. We know about science and technology in the Middle Ages, and let's take a look at how it's different than science and technology in the Renaissance. So in the Middle Ages, science is all about proving the Bible is correct. So scientists were actually working for the church, trying to fit science and things that they learned into Christian teachings, whereas the Renaissance was different. In the Renaissance, scientists studied the ancient world and its great achievements. However, they used human reasoning to prove that things were correct. It was not about trying to prove that the Bible is actual fact, but more about finding out what is fact and what is true. We have some notes on this page, and the first thing you're going to want to make sure you have done is your definition of humanism. Humanism is a new way of living in the Renaissance. So humanism is a cultural movement of the Renaissance based on the study of classical works. This is going to support scientists of the Renaissance. Because humanists study and value critical thinking, they want to understand how things work, and investigate for learning. So they might be the kind of person who would take apart a clock to see why it worked. Humanists also believe that people should lead a meaningful life. So if you have an interest, you should be able to follow it. This would include education. This is different than the Middle Ages as well because in the Middle Ages we know life was all about struggle so that you could one day make it to heaven. Humanists studied things like poetry, grammar, history, and rhetoric. Okay, we have a few more things we want to make sure we get down in our notes here. So I keep mentioning the word scientific revolution. What is the scientific revolution? Well, that's a transformation of thinking caused by experimentation, scientific observation, and questioning of traditional opinions. So people are not willing to just accept knowledge of the past. They want to figure out if things are true on their own. That leads to developmentation of scientific instruments to help prove ideas using mathematics and creating and following through with experiments. Again, this is different than the past because people are using scientific data rather than religious or magical data written and presented by ancient writers. So, for example, one ancient writer wrote that if you ground unicorn horn in a circle, placed a spider in the middle, the unicorn horn would magically keep the spider in the center of that circle. This cannot be tested, it cannot be proved, so that writing would have been rejected by Renaissance scientists. Please take a minute, pause the video, and make sure you have the definition of scientific revolution and Part of the success of the scientists of the scientific revolution was their ability to share information. And this comes down to a very important development by Johannes Gutenberg, and this is the invention of the printing press. The printing press changes things from how things were written in the Middle Ages. We know in the Middle Ages, monks spent months and even years painstakingly writing books by hand. Johannes Gutenberg creates a printing press so that it's almost like the idea of stamping. You can quickly make copies 
of written works, and then those can be disseminated throughout Europe. This is also going to make written materials much more available to people and help with people becoming more literate, people become more learned. Later you'll be watching a video about the printing press and its importance on the scientific revolution. Finally, we would like to I would like you to make sure you understand that the Reformation changes Europe quite a bit. Many countries go through the Reformation, and those are going to be the countries that embrace science and scientists and new learning. Countries that don't go through a Reformation, like Italy, for example, they remain Catholic. The Catholic Church feels challenged by these scientists who are questioning the way things were, and so they'll reject the work of the scientists. It's important to remember that the scientific revolution is going to make conflict between Renaissance scientists and the Catholic Church. We're going to be using the example of the geocentric and heliocentric theory this week to help us understand how the Catholic Church tries to prevent new ideas from scientists, scientists of this time period and reformed areas allow those scientists to work kind of unfettered. Thank you for your attention. Tomorrow we'll be looking at Nicholas Copernicus and his heliocentric theory.